The few British comedians not appearing in uh, a pantomime this year, although some might think more's the pity, is the star of TV shows such as Comedy Wavelength and, more recently, Whose Line Is It Anyway? And I could imagine him as a very downbeat Abenaza. Please welcome Mr Paul Merton. <laughs> Oh, so we haven't had one bang all evening, have we? So to speak. There's nothing in this, won't it? Hang on. There's a joke um, in there, Paul. What do you have when you don't feel well? I don't know. Gloves on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you analyse that, I bet you couldn't find a joke under a microscope. That's what it, that's what it actually says. It's, it's awful, isn't it? I thought you'd made it up. I no, thought you'd no, been no. clever or something. No, I certainly wasn't being clever. No, it's always it's actually. Ah, no, that. when you don't feel well. That's what it is. I've finally cracked it. You knew all along, though, didn't you, Paul? Well, you, you know, it could be anything, really. <laughs> what happens if you, you know, what do you do when you don't feel well? I've got your th thermometer in your mouth. It could be anything. Or well, thermometer up your ass, even, <laughs> yes, perhaps. Now, um, you've been a comedian for how many years now? It's strange that you should throw in this thermometer up the ass. Well, where did that come from? <laughs> Suddenly come out of the blues, didn't it? I think, yes, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I've been a comedian for a while, yes. Yeah. How did you get started? Because you were in the civil service, weren't you? Yes, way? I was. Yes, I was many years ago, yes. Um, when I was, didn't have the nerve to do what I'm doing now, uh, which is reading out cracker jokes on live television. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I just thought, you know, when I started just by going to the comedy store one night, and the comedy store was a place where you could get up and just do five minutes of stuff. Yeah. And if it went well, then they asked you back, and it just sort of started from there, you know. Particularly rough kind of audience they have down there, though, don't they? Yes, it is, yes. The Friday and Saturday shows are very rough. Um, that's why a lot of comedians, sort of like Ben Elton and stuff, his delivery is very fast and aggressive, because you had to be like that at the comedy store, because you have to shout louder than the audience and, and not leave any room for them to heckle you, you know. So how did you get on? Because you're very slow and sort of downbeat, aren't you? <laughs> Well, not when I was doing that show, no. <laughs> you, you have to shout, really. You just have to sort of shout into the microphone. So, like, a 20-minute act can be sort of 15 minutes long, you know. And you don't miss anything out. You just keep attacking them and hammering them all the time. You, yeah. you mustn't give them a chance to sort of to breathe, you know. You mustn't give them a chance to get at you in any way. Now, it was down the Comedy Store that you, you're with the Comedy Store players, aren't you? And you do this improvisational... Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's a Sunday show. That's different from the Friday and Saturday. I mean, you couldn't improvise in front of a Friday and Saturday audience, you know. Mm. Um, you just have to stick to what you do. But the Sunday, the Sunday show is a good fun. Now, and it's, it's probably because of, a, because of that you and the, the TV show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, that's right, yeah. A few times. Now, I, I thought the show should have been live, that show, because it's people improvising and thinking on their wits. Yeah. And, in fact, they edited, didn't they? Um, that's, yes, I think the reason why it wasn't live was because if you do a live television show, you have to end on a dead certain time, don't you? Like, the show's 25 minutes long. And if you put on the pressure of time as well, it's very difficult to improvise anyway, but if you're against the clock, it just makes it difficult. I mean, they, they just, they just over-recorded. They didn't sort of, like, cut the things that you actually saw. They just didn't use the things that they'd recorded as well, you know? Well, so what, they, you mean they cut the bits out that weren't funny? Is that what you're no, saying? no, 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 no. Um, well, yes, yes, they did. <laughs> No, but it's a difficult thing to do. Do you ever get stumped? Do you ever dry up when you're trying to improvise? Yes, but then you just look at the other person and pretend it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I thought we'd do is an, an interesting concept, which we're going to fall flat on our face if you realise this, Paul. I thought we might try a bit of an improvisational chat show here, and I might ask members of the audience to give me some topics for conversation that we could banter about. Do you fancy the idea there, Paul? Uh, I suppose I'd better say yes, hadn't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go on, then. So who has? Anyone got any suggestions for a chat here? Keep Thanks. it clean, please. Oh, come on, don't be so predictable. Sex and toilet paper. It's funny how people's minds work, isn't it? <laughs> we always get that. You ask for sort of people, you know, we, uh, things from the audience. It's always sex and toilet paper. <laughs> this and Mrs Thatcher. Yeah, well, I can understand. Combine the three and you get... Um, anyway. Yeah, what about something else? Eggs. I beg your pardon? Eggs. 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 Well, what about eggs? Do you still eat a lot of eggs, Paul? No, I don't eat any eggs at all now, no. That was a good subject. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, when I'm having sex with toilet paper, I like to sort of... <laughs> you like to rub an egg in your body at the yes, same time, don't you? Yeah. Let's try, give me one more shot. Anyone Easter. Else? Easter. Well, that's very kind of seasonal and appropriate at this time, isn't it? <laughs> you looking forward to Easter? Done all your Easter shopping? Yes, I've done it all now, yes. I'm looking forward to the Easter Christmas special, you know. <laughs> OK, well, uh, well, thank you very much for your, for your much-needed participation, that audience members. <laughs> um, well, oh dear. What about Comedy Wavelength? There was another show which you appeared on. It was on. another show, yes, uh, it was. Now, you weren't initially meant to actually appear on TV in that, were you? No, the, I, the, what happened was they, had a, they did a, a, a pilot for it, and it was just like a sketch show, and what happened was they needed somebody just to come on between the sketches and just to keep the audience warmed up and stuff. You know, I, they often do this in television studios. And that's what I did, and um, it, went, it went well enough, so they asked me to do the programme. So it went better than the show itself, I was under the impression. Uh, yeah. <laughs> OK, well... But then, it, you know... 
But you still you're doing you you got a one man show planned for next year? Maybe? Um, well, there are things, but I mean, it doesn't really exist yet, so it's difficult to talk about it yet. Yeah, know? because I remember a while ago you, you were planning to do a one man show. It wasn't last summer; it was the summer before Edinburgh. Yeah. And you broke your leg, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I, I there was '87. I was up there. I, I it was a one man show in three weeks, and after the first night, I went out and played football, and I broke my leg. And I thought, um, but and there was a benefit for you. It was a yes. There was a, yes. It was quite a sort of serious break at the time, and there was other sort of like related illnesses. Um, but I thought they, this was some kind of clever joke. It was Paul Merton's broken his leg, but having a benefit. And I thought, well, they're throwing him for anything now. Yeah, no, yeah, it was. Like, no, it was. It, it was very serious at the time, you know. And, and people had a benefit for me at a comedy store and, and gave me much needed money because I hadn't been insured, so I'd lost quite a bit of money in Edinburgh. And the problem is, of course, if it's a one-man show, there's nobody else to replace you. No, that's right. <laughs> Well, it's been a pleasure having you on, Paul, and I'm sure we will be trying the audience improvisational chat again sometime. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, dear Mr. Paul Martin. <laughs> well, we're going to take a commercial break now because, uh, well, because I want to go to the toilet, but we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Nick Lowe, uh, Mr. Peter Cook, Father Christmas, and hopefully an empty bladder. Back in a bit.